position that we believe is in the best interest of the city. And, and again, it's, we'll get that over to the city council, and, and it's up to those seven folks to then consider that and, you know, take it or, or go in a different direction. That's fine. You know, but again, we're, we're in a recommendation role right now. So again, this is the first, you know, when we start, in a minute here, we go into old business, talking about this, this is where we really start to, I, I would hope to, you know, really jump into the weeds of, of the details of the, of the various options, the pros and cons, uh, ownership pros and cons. So we're really starting today. Okay, well, thanks. Right. Good question. The purpose of the uh, City Hall property, we have the, for the background earlier, Pam. I, guess, uh, I don't know, where do you want to start? I, I don't have any formed agenda for this other than, again, real quick summary, but um, as of the last meeting, I think um, we were asked uh, to provide a recommendation to City Council. Um, I think it's it's something that there, there was no time frame given, but certainly that um, you know, there's, there's, there's several reasons why we, we'd like to get a recommendation, you know, in an expeditious manner, um, you know, in terms of like, you finding a new home, if that's what you need to do for staff and all this other thing. So, you know, again, we're not under any pressure that I'm aware of, uh, but again, we, we, we certainly want to you know, keep, the, keep the discussion rolling. And then whenever, I guess, the CIC as a group feels comfortable about the recommendation, um, the recommended model, and, Ownership and all those various topics, and we'll, we'll be ready to go. So, so maybe the thing to do is progress to date because Dave, I think you and uh, Rob have worked on you know the design uh, firm and the construction firm. Maybe you want to just give us a quick update, and then not to take over the agenda here, but then also have a discussion about what this building is now. You, you gave us a size. I'm assuming we studied to see what footprint of our space as a city hall functioning today and looking down the road so we don't end up with something we outgrow or need to shrink again from. Um, and then establishing a footprint, determining what the parking is left over from that footprint, and then we talk about how high that goes, whether that's two stories, two and a half, five, or twenty. I mean, that's kind of the simple way to look at this, to kind of narrow down a hundred choices into something manageable to move along to the decision or approvers. Well, uh, we received six SOQ statement of qualifications from design firms. Ken, myself, Rob, and Cindy went through them and we selected three that we wanted to interview, that we wanted to do a full interview. We wrote follow-up letters to the other three saying thank you, but we moved on. And we interviewed the three of them, independent, fresh score sheets, and it was hands down, without a doubt, no if ands or buts that mcgill smith came in um the most prepared the most qualified um could have came in thinking they had it in the bag but probably put on 10 times more effort than the other so we walked away from that with our scorecards that we would recommend that the designer be mcgill smith punching on the project it's just at what point we're sort of we don't know at what point when we hand that information except we're sort of handing that to you now they, they by far had the best grasp. And for those of you that didn't like, you know, maybe the, the design that went out, they, they, and Ken will vouch, they said, we're starting with a bike. And that, that this, that in the beginning, it was simply, what's the most you could do? Here's the maximum that you could do, right? And I, I, I will be very blunt about it. I, I made it very clear to, 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 to the representatives Miguel Smith, I said, you know, I think that uh, we need to, to really look at something that, that, that everyone will rally behind, and, and that more than likely it was not going to be the four story building. And that's when he said, we're working on a blank piece of paper. We can, um, the only other thing I did, just because it was prudent to do it, I did have the, the entire property boundaries professionally surveyed. Uh, that was just to move things along. So we paid for that with a very nice, fresh survey. Um, of the entire boundary, pretty much behind Bazaas, behind all the way around. So we know exactly it, all the events. We got that base data that you would say. But I know I can speak for Cindy, who's not here. Um, it, it's not on I for sure. And then just a point of clarification that um, you, the, the city is not intending at this time to enter into a contract with MSP. But you, you've, you've selected, you've gone through that process, and you're kind of in a holding 
pattern with entering any contract. That's correct. Be, and I, I want to bring that to the group's attention because there are some options for different development models where sure. you know, the developer would bring their own designers. That's all the reason I throw that out there. Right. So we're kind of in a holding pattern pattern with, with all of the... Well, keep, keep in mind, you know, they've been, after their feasibility study, they, they have invested about four months worth of work, mm -hmm. which Dave mentioned. You know, they went from a two-story prototype, then they, discussions moved it to a four-story prototype, and as Dave mentioned, in the uh, selection process, these other guys came in with one sheet of paper with bold points on it, and McGill Smith went to the effort that this was emailed to you, but they outlined the entire process with the timetable based on the footprint, and they went through every phase from starting at this day, if they were selected officially, what it would take to get done. And they even went so far as, and I think everybody's received this electronically, correct? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I well, thought these were your talking points. Yeah. Well, yeah. maybe I can jump in here for a yeah, second. Is, really, I'm Ken Geis, and I was hired as a consultant to help manage the process in this and to give some a, a little bit of guidance on, on the process. And early early in the phases of this, you really can, you could move forward in a, in a project like this in a host of different ways. Um, the one traditional way that governments in the state of Ohio have done things really for the last hundred years is a plan and spec project where the city would go out and they would hire an architect, they would design a project, and then they would bid the project from that point forward. They would bid all the mechanicals, they would bid all of the, the major functions of that going forward. Uh, recently, the Ohio laws changed and the cities and municipalities in the state of Ohio had different options. They can do a design build and they can even do a modified design build, which they call a construction manager at risk project. Uh, early on in this, in this project, it was, it was sort of determined um, by the city through uh, the city manager that you would go, that they would begin the process of a construction manager at risk on that. And that's why there was a, a, an SOQ for the architect, because what you do then is you put out a statement of qualifications to hire an architect to design the project. And one of the advantages of that in going through this process is really that the city at this point isn't specifically obligated to anything yet in this. They've gone through this process, um, they've identified an architect that they want to move forward with. Um, as they've indicated um, through this process that it was MSB that came in with a very good project on that. And they said that, look, they can go they can design this, they can move forward with this if they so choose. From this point, the city right now is sort of a, a holding pattern because once they decide that they're defined that they are going to go forward with this project in this manner, they will engage the architect and then the architect along with the city will interview the construction companies to move forward as a, um, as a partnership in that. And then they will identify, the, go through a similar process for the, the interview with an SRQ for the construction companies on that with the advice and counsel of the architect because they're going to work specifically with them in that. And then you will hire a construction company um, or engage in a construction company to begin the process. And then from that point, the architectural um, firm or company will then design the facility based upon the criteria that the city gives them in that. And then they'll work with the construction company in that similar to a design build project to make sure that the design of that facility is done in you know the most economical and the, the best possible way for the, the city to, to move forward in that. So that's kind of where we are right now in, in this process. No decisions have been made as to exactly how large the facility is going to be, how many stories it's going to be, uh, and the general makeup of that. And then there was some discussion, too, about ownership of it. And again, I'll segue into that. Hi, Now we're 
Okay, we're good, we're gas. Yeah, we are. <laughs>